Hello, this is Steve Wiseman at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Among the most controversial steps taken by President Trump in his first weeks in office was an executive order to roll back provisions of the Dodd-Frank law, which was enacted after the financial cr uh, crisis of 2008. Today, I'm talking with Ted Truman of the Peterson Institute about the international implications of that executive order and some concerns that have been raised by moves in Congress. Ted, welcome. First, tell me what's the basis of the concerns uh, in Congress? Well, the basis of the concerns in Congress are that the vice chairman of the House Foreign Financial Services Committee, Mr. McHenry, has written to the Fed Reserve to instruct them to stop negotiating any you know, contacts with foreign officials in terms you know, on, on regulations governing the financial system in the United States. Uh, he implies, he states in his letter to Chair uh, Yellen uh, that these act negotiations that have been going on since, uh, since the, the crisis in 2010 and 8, uh, uh, in parallel with the passage of the, G, uh, the Bod Frank Act, uh, have uh, disadvantaged U.S. Uh, financial firms, uh, and he wants it to stop. Now, specifically, I should have said that Ted is a veteran of exactly such international negotiations when he served at the Treasury and at the Fed, but specifically, he mentions uh, the Basel III Accords, which were designed to strengthen the stability of banks. Now, what does he, he wants us to withdraw from those? He implies that we should, those standards which raise capital requirements uh, and uh, involve other aspects of strengthening the system, uh, uh, raise capital standards on all banks around the world, by agreement, uh, where he actually is not correct is the Basel Accord, as it's called. Uh, this would be replace the previous Basel II, which replaced Basel I. Right. Uh, the Basel Accord is an is a agreement that the countries involved, the authorities in the countries involved, will seek to implement these standards, agreed standards, through their own domestic legislation and regulation. And, uh, and in consistent with that agreement, and also consistent with Dodd-Frank, uh, the Federal Reserve and other bank regulators in the United States have moved to implement these, uh, uh, these standards. So he seems to, in this letter, which just uh, came to light in the last couple of days, it, he seems to imply that um, there was some kind of a secret deal made uh, uh, among all these regulators. But uh, I don't recall it being very secretive. In fact, we it debated it here at the Institute. It wasn't very secret. If these processes are ones which are very, on the one hand, they're very open the, in the sense that the decisions of the uh, Basel Committee or the Financial Stability Board, both, both of which uh, are mentioned in the letter, Financial Stability Board is an overarching group that covers many so-called international standard setting bodies, including the Basel uh, Committee on Banking. Uh, these are uh, they, these were designed to strengthen cooperatively strengthen international rules. The one thing we learned from the crisis is that there's n you can't contain financial crises within borders. Uh, uh, within our border, our, our crisis spilled over to Europe, and the European crisis spilled back onto the United States. And the only way to prevent that is to have relatively common rules and standards, or else you're going to you're going a country will be. Uh, affected by the weak standards in other countries, and uh, he seems to be object to that. But even in the case of uh, the Dodd Frank uh, uh, law, uh, that was not that was passed by the Congress. They asked for something, some things to be done. Uh, the regulations that to implement Dodd Frank uh, were issued by the various banking uh, and supervisory agencies for public comment, uh, and they received voluminous public comment. So the notion that this has all been done in secret and uh, by global bureaucrats in foreign uh, lands, as he put it, uh, strikes me as uh, not uh, accurate uh, and, uh, and undercuts, uh, in many respects, uh, the kind of cooperation that we need to have a stronger, safer international financial system. I mean, President Trump, I'm sure, uh, has won some public support by saying he wants an America first uh, policy. But for him, that implies protectionism, raising tariffs, and also walking away from these cooperative efforts. Uh, where will that lead? 
Well, I think walking away from those cooperative efforts will mean lead to a to a breakdown in uh, these systems, right? And if every country walks away, then each other countries th things that happen in other countries can adversely affect things that happen in the United in the United States. Uh, the financial system is quintessentially a system that spills across borders. Uh, you, know, you can't build walls against financial flows. Uh, you can have capital controls, but we're way wrong, away from that. And uh, so this is an area where you need to have common rules and regulations and understandings of how the, we want the system to work in the interests of consumers and producers in the United States and around the world. And that's in the interests of other countries. And a safer global system, in my view, is in the interest of the United States as well. So that way, it does confirm with the America First proposition. Thank you, Ted. That's great.